Hello everyone. Today we are going to do a problem based on influence line diagrams. Let us read the question one time. For the overhanging beam AB shown in the figure, draw the influence lines for the following support reaction for A, support reaction for B, shear force and bending moment at D, shear force to the right of B, bending moment at B, shear force and bending moment at E. A beam AB is given with overhanging. First, let us draw the influence lines for the support reactions RA and RB. First, we have to keep the unit load between A and B at a distance of X from A. To find RA, we have to take a moment about B. We have to follow right hand side rule. Clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. Or A is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is L. The unit load is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be negative. For the unit load, we have to take this distance. This distance is L minus X. For R A, we will get L minus X upon L. In the point A, X will be 0. So here, instead of X, we can apply 0. In this way, for R A, we will get 1. In the point B, X will be L. Here, instead of X, we can apply L. In this way, for R A, we will get 0. Now, let us apply this rule and find R B. R A and R B are acting upwards. So, both of them are positive. The unit load is acting downwards so that it will be negative. Finally, for R B, we will get X upon L. In the point A, X will be 0. Here, instead of X, we can apply 0. So, for R B, we will get 0. In the point B, X will be L. So, here, instead of X, we have to apply L. So, for R B, we will get 1. Now, let us keep the unit load between B and C at a distance of X from C. First, let us find R B. To find R B, let us take a moment about A. Here, we have to follow left hand side rule. Clockwise will be negative and anticlockwise will be positive. R B is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is L. The unit load is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. For the unit load, we have to take this distance. This distance is A minus X. So this distance will be L plus A minus X. For RB, we will get L plus A minus X upon L. In the point C, X will be 0. So here, instead of X, we have to apply 0. In this way, for RB, we will get L plus A upon L. In the point B, X will be A. Here, instead of X, we have to apply A. So for RB, we will get 1. Now, let us apply this rule and to find RA. RA and RB are acting upwards, so both of them are positive. The unit load is acting downwards so that it will be negative. For RA, we will get X minus A upon L. In the point C, X will be 0. So here, instead of X, we can apply 0. In this way, for RA, we will get minus A upon L. In the point B, X will be A. Here, instead of A, we can apply A so that RA will be 0. Using these three, we can draw the ILD for RA. This line should be linear. And using these three, we can draw the ILD for RB. Now, we are going to draw the influence line diagrams for the shear force and bending movement in the point D. 
the point D is located at a distance of Z from the point A, first let us find the ordinates for the shear force. First, we have to keep the unit to load between A and D. We have already found the reactions. Let us find the shear force in the point D, that is FD. We can use the left hand side rule. Up to the point D, we have only the vertical reaction RB. Since it is acting upwards, it will be negative. In the point A, X will be 0. So, FD also will be 0. In the point D, X will be Z. So, FD will be minus Z by L. Now, let us keep the unit to load between D and B. To find the shear force in the point D, let us use the right hand side rule. Up to the point D, we have only RA. It is acting upwards so that it will be positive. When x will be z, fd will be l minus c upon l. When x is l, it will be l minus l by l. So, fd will be 0. Now, let us keep the unit to load between b and c. We have already found these two reactions. To find fd, we can use right hand side rule. Up to the point d, we have only the vertical reaction or a. It is acting upwards so that it will be positive. In the point C, X is 0. So, FD will be minus A upon L. And in the point B, X is A. So, FD will be 0. Using these values, we can draw the influence line diagram for FD. In the point D, there are two values. One is to the left of D. And one is to the right of D. Now we are going to draw the influence line diagrams for the bending moment in the point D. First we have to keep the unit load between the points A and D at a distance of X from the point A. To find the moment in the point D that is MD we can use left hand side rule. RB is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be positive. We have to take this distance. This distance is L minus Z. In the point A, X will be 0. So for MD, we will get 0. In the point D, X will be Z. So for MD, we will get Z into L minus Z upon L. Now let us keep the unit to load between D and B. To find MD, we can use right hand side rule. Or A is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is Z. In the point D, X will be Z. So MD will be Z into L minus Z upon L. In the point B, X will be L. So L minus L upon L into Z, it will be 0. Now let us keep the unit load between B and C at a distance of X from C. Let us find MD or A is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is Z. In the point C, X will be 0. So MD will be minus AZ upon L. In the point B, X will be A, so MD will be 0. Using these 4, we can draw the ILD for MD. Now we are going to draw the ILD for the shear force to the left of B. First, let us keep the unit load between A and B at a distance of X from A. To find the shear force to the left of B, we can use the left hand side rule. We have only RB, it is acting upwards so that it will be negative. In the point A, X will be 0. In this case, the shear force FB will be 0. In the point B, X will be L. So, the shear force FB will be minus 1. 
Now let us keep the unit load between B and C at a distance of X from C. To find the shear force to the left of B, we can use right hand side rule. We have only RA, it is acting upwards so that it will be positive. In the point C, X will be 0. In this case, the shear force will be minus A upon L. In the point B, X will be A. So, the shear force FB will be 0. Using these 4, we can draw the ILD for the shear force to the left of B. Now, we are going to draw the ILD for the shear force to the right of B. First, let us keep the unit load between A and B. Up to the point B, there is no load, there is nothing. So, when the unit load moves from the point A to the point B, the shear force to the right of B will be zero. Now, let us keep the unit load between B and C. If the unit load moves from C to B, the shear force to the right of B will be 1 and it will be constant from C to B. It will be positive because in the left hand side rule, downwards is positive. This is the ILD for the shear force to the right of B. Now we are going to draw the ILD for bending moment in the point B. First, let us keep the unit load between A and B. We can use left hand side rule. Up to the point B, there is nothing. So, when the unit load moves from the point A to the point B, the moment in the point B will be zero. Now, let us keep the unit load in the point C. Let us find MB. This load is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative and the distance is A. So for MB, we will get minus A. This is the ILD for MB. Now we are going to draw the ILD for the shear force in the point E. Point E is located at a distance of Z1 from C. When the unit load moves from A to B, the shear force in the point E will be zero because in EC there is no load. When the unit load moves from B to E, the shear force in the point E will be zero because in EC there is no load. When the unit load moves from E to C, the shear force in the point E will be one and it will be constant from C to E. Here you can see the ILD for FE. Now let us draw the ILD for the bending moment in the point E. When the unit load moves from A to B, the moment in the point E will be zero because there is no load in EC. When the unit load moves from B to E, ME will be zero because in EC there is no load. Now let us keep the unit load between E and C at a distance of X from C. Let us find the movement in the point E. The unit load is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. We have to take this distance. This distance is Z1 minus X. In the point C, X will be 0. In this case, ME will be minus Z1. In the point E, X will be Z1. In this case, ME will be 0. Here, you can see the ILD for ME.